And then uh, I just calculated today that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Three I Atlas gets near Jupiter on Jupiter's gravity dominates over the sun's gravity. And this coincidence is to within uh, one part in 26,000. Uh, the fact that NASA ignores the anomalies that Three Atlas had, meaning the, the very small likelihood that it lies in the plane of the planets around the sun and its very large size, a million times more massive object than the first interstellar object, you know, the, the obviously allows them to make a, a very confident statement that it's a comet, but I'm still very intrigued by these anomalies. Something impossible just happened, and NASA went silent. 3. I, Atlas, the interstellar visitor racing through our solar system, felt a push near the sun, a small one, unexplained, non-gravitational. Scientists detected it, measured it, documented it, but they couldn't explain what caused it. Then someone ran the numbers, and everything changed. That tiny push, that fraction of acceleration no one could account for, nudged 3i Atlas onto a new path. And on March 16th, 2026, the object will pass within 53.445 million kilometers of Jupiter. It's almost exactly Jupiter's hill radius, the precise boundary where Jupiter's gravity takes control, where the sun's pull ends and the giant planet's grip begins, where objects that aren't fast enough to escape get captured. The difference between 3i Atlas's closest approach and that boundary? Just 0.06 million kilometers. A rounding error on a cosmic scale. Harvard professor Avi Loeb ran the calculations. He called it remarkable. The probability of a normal comet ending up on such a precisely aligned path after a random push near the sun? 1 in 26,000. Not impossible, but staggeringly unlikely for a natural object drifting through space. Hit subscribe. Because what comes next isn't speculation, it's physics, cold, hard, orbital, mechanics. And the numbers are pointing somewhere no one expected. When 3i Atlas passed perihelion in October 2025, it disappeared, behind the sun from Earth's vantage point, invisible to telescopes, unobservable by direct imaging. For weeks, no one could see it, no one could track it, no one knew what was happening. When it re-emerged on the other side, astronomers recalculated its trajectory, and the results stopped them cold. The path could not be explained by gravity alone. The object had accelerated. Not much, just enough. A gentle push. A tiny course correction. But the timing was perfect. The magnitude was exact. And the result was a trajectory that now aims directly at Jupiter's gravitational threshold. Small jets of vaporizing ice occur on comets all the time. The adjustment was not merely significant, it was of precisely the magnitude needed to drive 3i Atlas to the exact circumference of Jupiter's hill sphere. Here's what makes this truly unsettling. Jupiter's hill radius is not a scientifically significant location for comets or asteroids. It's not a place where things happen. It doesn't trigger tidal disruption. It doesn't cause thermal activation. Yet here is 3i Atlas on track to approach that line within a fraction of a percent of precision. The hill sphere is enormous, a region more than 53 million kilometers in radius. It's the zone where Jupiter's gravity overtakes the suns, where the giant planet's pull becomes dominant, where objects, if they're slow enough, can be captured. Reaching that boundary requires an object to approach Jupiter at exactly the right distance, neither too close nor too far, moving with just the right speed arriving at just the right moment. It's the kind of target that, if you described it as a bullseye, would be a ridiculous understatement. Because this isn't hitting a bullseye from across the room. This is threading a needle from a thousand miles away, while blindfolded. In the dark, and 3i Atlas is about to do it. On March 16th, 2026, the object will graze the outermost edge of Jupiter's gravitational domain, and when it does, we'll finally know whether this was the most extraordinary coincidence in astronomical history, or something else entirely. The acceleration happened behind the sun. The forces responsible cannot be studied directly. Some have suggested it could be explained by sublimation of volatile ice, a mechanism observed in 2i Borisov and many long-period comets. Post-perihelion images of 3i Atlas reveal multiple outgassing jets contributing to its visible coma structure. These jets can introduce thrust. 
natural propulsion generated as sunlight heats and vaporizes frozen materials embedded beneath the surface. Loeb asks a bold question. What if 3i Atlas isn't a natural comet at all, but a spacecraft? If this possibility is taken seriously, then all the strange anomalies we've seen so far might not be random accidents. Instead, they could be evidence that this object has a specific purpose connected to Jupiter. Loeb suggests that during its journey, 3i Atlas might be using its jets not as normal cometary outgassing, but as thrusters guiding itself with remarkable accuracy toward a precise point near Jupiter. He points to images showing multiple jets after its closest approach to the sun. Those jets could be thrusters carefully used to fine-tune its trajectory. The best time to do this would be near perihelion, because that's when a craft could use the sun's gravity to its advantage. If 3i Atlas is carrying mini-probes or devices, they could be released right at the edge of Jupiter's hill sphere. At that point, those objects would only need to fire their engines to cancel their high relative speed, about 65.9 kilometers per second. By reducing their speed, the released probes could almost become stationary, making it easier for Jupiter's gravity to pull them in and possibly capture them. Meanwhile, the main body of 3i Atlas would continue its journey and fly past Jupiter, escaping the hill sphere. Because at that exact boundary, Jupiter's escape velocity is surprisingly low, only about 2.2 kilometers per second. In other words, it's not too hard for a sufficiently advanced probe to drop something into Jupiter's orbit if it's designed for that. Loeb also noted something obvious but profound. Jupiter is easy to recognize. The biggest planet in the solar system, a massive gravitational anchor visible from light years away. If an ancient civilization sent a probe billions of years ago, Long before humanity emerged on Earth, Jupiter would be the obvious target, the most prominent feature of this planetary system. We tend to think it's all about us, but maybe it isn't. Maybe Jupiter, with its dozens of moons, its massive magnetic field, and its gravitational dominance, is what attracted the visit. And if 3i Atlas drops small probes near Jupiter, we might be able to detect them. Dr. Michio Kaku also mentioned there's a real possibility that 3i Atlas could do something unusual during its close approach to Jupiter. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, maybe it is a duck, he said. Well, this is a duck that is rather strange. It has a slightly different chemical composition. Its trajectory is not quite the usual trajectory of a comet. Some people say maybe the aliens are simply holding off for a while and then they're going to show fireworks later in the future. That cannot be ruled out totally. Astronomers around the world are now tracking this object through powerful telescopes, revealing new data that is slowly giving more clues about its nature and composition. Recently, NASA released an image of 3i Atlas captured by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. But according to NASA, every anomaly seen so far is still considered natural. In their view, 3i Atlas is simply a comet just a stranger and more unusual one compared to the others we know. As 3. I Atlas proceeds toward Jupiter, the object will encounter a region where gravitational interactions shift from Sun-dominated to Jupiter-dominated. Astronomers are now refining observation strategies to collect as much data as possible during the flyby. Precise tracking will be essential to detect any secondary acceleration events, especially if new outgassing occurs as 3i Atlas responds to Jupiter's growing gravitational pull. The Hubble Space Telescope, large ground-based facilities, and future wide-field observatories could all contribute to monitoring the encounter. Mission planners have even discussed the potential for serendipitous spacecraft observations. Instruments aboard Juno, for example, could be tasked with looking outward rather than inward if mission constraints allow. Researchers are examining two broad interpretive paths. The first assumes natural processes alone are responsible, that the observed acceleration is simply a product of asymmetric outgassing, and that the precise outcome represents a rare coincidence made possible by chaotic orbital evolution. In this view, 3i Atlas remains a comet behaving within the realm of known physics, albeit with exceptional timing and results. The second interpretation is more speculative, yet cannot be dismissed without evidence. It considers the possibility that the acceleration was not merely the byproduct of sublimation, but a purposeful redirection produced by forces or mechanisms beyond typical cometary behavior. 
This doesn't necessarily imply artificial origin. A wide spectrum of natural processes remain poorly understood, especially those involving interstellar material and unknown volatile compositions. However, the door remains open to the unexpected. Interstellar objects represent new territory in planetary science, and extraordinary claims cannot be definitively ruled out when the underlying data reveal an extraordinary outcome. For now, the mystery of 3i Atlas remains unsolved. Future observations will be crucial. The more data we collect, the closer we may get to understanding what this object truly is. Until then, the world will be watching closely to see what 3i Atlas does when it finally makes its close approach to Jupiter. Because if it releases anything, if anything changes course, if anything gets captured in Jupiter's gravity that wasn't there before, that changes everything.